this year. We're thankful for life. This year, we're thankful for grace. This year, in a year where it seems like everything is changing, we're thankful for a God who never changes and a kingdom that can never be shaken. This year, we're thankful for God's mercy to forgive us, for God's word to guide us, and for God's spirit to transform us. This year, we'll remember that we're entitled to nothing and therefore thankful for everything. And this year, Thanksgiving won't just be an annual holiday, but a permanent attitude because every day, every hour, every moment is an opportunity to be thankful to God. This year, we are thankful. In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome to Trinity Online. Today we're going to be talking of the second in a series about gratitude. Last week we talked about gratitude for the past. Today we're going to be talking about the gratitude that we should have in our hearts in the present. We're going to be focusing on what Jesus told his disciples that they should do when the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem occurred. It's a practical and applicable thing. At, at ways to endure difficulties, or how do we maintain authentic gratitude during times of distress in our present lives? Welcome, my name is Eb Hagen. I'm the senior pastor here at Trinity United Methodist Church in Fort Walton Beach. We're so glad you joined us uh, in here at Trinity Online. I'm a person who really likes cheesy jokes, especially the there's good news and bad news jokes. I read one this week that I'm gonna pass on to you, whether you love them or hate them. Here it goes. An art gallery owner said to a local artist, I have some good news and I have some bad news. The artist asked, what's the good news? The gallery owner said, the good news is I just met a woman who loves your painting. She came by today. She asked if the value would go up after you passed away. I told her, absolutely it would. They're already valuable, but they're gonna go up astronomically when the artist dies. And she bought every piece at the store. The artist said, that's wonderful news, that's fantastic. How can this be bad news? The owner said very sheepishly and very nervously, well, she was your wife. Now that's a good funny joke, I think, but then I'm a dad, but life has good news and it has bad news is the point of it. Life is always in flux. So, Today, I'm gonna to tell you a story about John Henderson, who was born in 1912 in Fort Worth, Texas. In 2019, he told the Washington Post that he remembers the first time he heard a radio. The neighbors brought one home when he was only eight years old. And a woman named Charlotte, who was born in Iowa, just two years later. Now, the Hendersons met while they were at, in class at the University of Texas in 1934. They continued to date through college while Charlotte was studying to become a teacher and John was a student athlete completing his education degree as well as playing football for the Texas Longhorns in an era where there were leather helmets and no face mask. Yeah, it's hard to imagine these days. The Hendersons married in 1939 during the Great Depression and spent just $7 on a hotel room for their honeymoon. They later moved to Port Arthur, Texas, where John coached and taught a junior high school and worked in the uh, oil industry. Now, John told the Post that his favorite invention that he had witnessed in his life, lifetime, other than jet engines, was the television. He first saw one in a store window on a trip to New York City in the early 1950s, and within a few years, he actually had one himself in his living room. Now, eventually, John retired in 1971, as well as his wife. Now, let that sink in. I mean, let that really sink in. They began, this couple began their twilight years of retirement during the Watergate scandal. So what's the company's secret, a couple's secret to longevity? Living in moderation, they said. Eat right, don't drink too much, and exercise almost every day. And recognize that life is a constant series of ups and downs. Be grateful for what you have during the good times and who you have 
during the bad times. Now, the Hendersons never had children either, so some people have said that it's really why they live so long, uh, John joked. But think about it. Their lives started during World War I, went on through the Great Depression, through World War II, the Civil Rights Era, Watergate, various political and social scandals, market highs and lows. They saw it all. John passed away in 2020 at the age of 107. The couple had been married for over 80 years. She passed away just a year later in 2021 at the age of 106. Needless to say, they had an immense amount of perspective on life's ups and downs and could teach us a lot about gratitude. So in today's gospel, Jesus is teaching his disciples how to have gratitude. He gave them practical advice how to deal with adversity, trauma, fear, wars, disaster, and violence that I think we could learn a lot for and help us maintain a spirit of gratitude. So here now, the passage from Luke chapter 21, verses 5 through 19. When some of them were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. Then he asked him, teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And Jesus said, beware that you are not led astray for many will come in my name and say, I am he and the time is near. Don't go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, don't be terrified for these things must take place first but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and plagues. And there'll be a dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before this occurred, they'll arrest you and persecute you. They'll hand you over to synagogues and prisons and you'll be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by your parents and siblings, by relatives and friends, and they'll put you, some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Now this is great advice to the disciples who would indeed face great persecutions, even death in service of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He told them they were gonna face difficult times, but he also encouraged them to persevere and always stay trust, uh, keep trust in God. So have you ever put your trust in the wrong thing or the wrong person? I think if you've endured a time in your life on the dating scene, you probably understand that you can't rely on people or. We want to trust things we can touch. We say, I'll be happy if I can buy one more pair of shoes, Air Jordans in my case. These are all about me, by the way. One more guitar, one more pair of Air Jordans. I mean, I hate to really tell you this. I really do. There's bad news and good news. This can't be bring comfort. Things cannot bring comfort. Worldly people won't always bring comfort. I know that might be, not be what you want to hear, but people can't provide an easy fix. Things cannot solve problems in a real lasting way. And I'm here to tell you right now also that there's something else. If you place your trust, or Lord knows your spiritual fulfillment in the Lord Jesus Christ, he will come and make sure all things work to his good. Put your trust and faith in God instead of something or somebody. Jesus said I offered because Jesus said that adversity is going to be an opportunity to share the good news. He said in those days you will have the opportunities to testify. Catastrophe always brings possibilities. I lived in Washington County in the panhandle of Florida during Hurricane Michael. Very catastrophic to the area that I was uh, living in hurricane. But it was the first time I met some of my neighbors because we had rolled up our sleeves, put on our gloves, picked up our chainsaws and went to work clearing roads and yards. And during that time we had fellowship and I was able to share the gospel in a real authentic way, a way that they could tell there was real authentic gratitude in my life for 
serving Jesus. Now, I think another thing that we should be careful to do is be authentic about our witness, is what Jesus says. Know your identity during a crisis. He said, people will be cruel to you because they, that these people chose love. People will be cruel to you because you choose to love rather than hate in the world we live in. In other words, people attack you when they know that your identity comes from the following the ways of Jesus. Now, just this week, I read a story of a young woman that I think really illustrates how we should not only keep our own identity, but change those around us through serving Jesus Christ during times of great peril to maintain gratitude. I read a story about a woman who visited a grandmother during spring break. She was away from college. And all she did was complain and share bad news. Her professors were mean to her. The boys didn't like her. The weather was too cold. She couldn't get enough sleep. She couldn't maintain a social life because she had too much schoolwork. But Granny was wise. While the girl was talking, Granny filled three pots with water and she put them on the stove and brought them to a boil. She put carrots in one pot, eggs in another pot, and sprinkled some ground coffee in the third. Her daughter kept going as if the whole universe revolved around her, and the, the, this universe that revolved around her was in imminent danger of collapse. Granny turned off the stove, put the carrots in a bowl, the eggs in a separate bowl, and the coffee in a pot. And she said to her granddaughter, honey, look, each of these faced the same adversity. The carrots went in strong, but they came out soft and weak. The eggs began with an outer shell that protected it from the inside, but inside it turned hard under the heat. However, the coffee, it maintained its shape and form, and it changed the water around it. Do you want to be carrots, eggs, or coffee? So in a world that's filled with good news, bad news, and peril, if we really want to maintain a true, true thankfulness in our hearts, a gratitude in our hearts, let's not forget to visit grannies for some coffee at times. May the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace.